Ethiopia is a tourist paradise. It is beautiful, secretive, mysterious, and extraordinary. Above all things, it is a country of great antiquity, with cultures and traditions that date back over 3,000 years. I'm Yvonne Bassi. Welcome to the town of Lalibela, situated here in the northern part of Ethiopia. See you after the break. The entire land region that surrounds the ancient town of Lalibela is literally littered with churches, some of them way out of sight, as high up as 3,100 meters above sea level, on the very peaks of smoking mountains. The major churches, however, are grouped into three clusters. We visit the first, situated in the heart of the town. At the entrance, we wait our turn and pay a small fee for the tour before undergoing the mandatory security procedures. But for those that come here to pray, entry into the churches is free and you will find all sorts of people, including the aged and the sick wandering in at all times of the day for a few quiet moments in prayer. You can see the biggest church here is excavated from top to bottom by simple materials which is hammers and chisels. You know this is why the Rokian Church is the most impressive Rokian Church in the world. Which one? The rocking, all the rocking of Talibala, because it's built from top to bottom. Let's say you have you have an apartment, you have a house, the basement is in the ground, but this is top. The ground is down. It's excavated from top to bottom, which is by simple materials, hammers and Jesus. How it could be to build church during 12th century, from top to bottom? This is the most impressive. This is the most remarkable. Steps hewn from the earth lead us downwards into the vicinity of the first church. On even walls, rough to the touch, bear testimony to the unrefined method that was used to construct them. Parts of the wall reveal gaping holes which we are told were once used as graves for the burial of priests and royalty. It is mandatory for all shoes to be removed before entry into any of the churches. Vaguely, we discern some Persian-styled carpets strewn across the floor of the church. For in those days, worship was carried out in relaxed sitting postures on the ground. From the dimness, a priest with shining apparel stands in silence, holding the symbols of worship before him. We retrace our footsteps from the dimness into the blinding light and walk through yet another of the endless tunnels into the outer courts where many more churches are located. Most of the churches in this highland area tend to occur between the unaligned edges of rocks they were the preferred sites for the churches then, as they provided the type of complete solitude that was desirous for the priests. We are introduced to an ancient two-story building made of brick, 
which today has been transformed into a house of prayer. From a half-open doorway, a bespectacled face peers out at us in curiosity, obviously unused to such intrusion. He happens to be the oldest priest in Lalibela and lives a very ascetic life here in this small enclosure, his only luxuries being the paintings on the walls around him, which inspire him and help to spur him on in this life of solitude that he has chosen to live. You can have a thing I talk about you. He tells us that it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to read the holy book these days, as his eyes are becoming enfeebled with age. Etchings in the shape of arches grace the portals of St. Mary's Church. Arabesque windows, the Star of David, and the ancient swastika symbol, believed to have originated from Asia, form some of the other designs on the walls of the church. Each of the churches are cared for by a priest who is responsible for seeing to the relics and keeping them in prime condition. To enable us get a better view of one of the treasures, the guide pushes open a heavy door made of olive wood and immediately the sunlight filters in lighting up an exquisite 16th century Frisco painting which has been preserved in its original position on this church pillar. This is what we call it Frisco. Frisco is attached or plastered on the rocky church. So basically we have two types of painting, Frisco and canvas. Frisco is plastered on the rocky church and the canvas which is a kind of fabric. One of the most spectacular of all the rock-hewn churches in Lalibela is the Better George's Church, which was excavated 12 meters below the ground. From a distance, the church appears to be carved out from the mountains. Upon approach, visitors are greeted by its roof in the shape of a cross lying flat on the ground. Its three-dimensional shape only becomes apparent when it is seen close up. For the priest who lives at the entrance to the church, another fruitful day has begun, and he hangs out his paintings in anticipation of the tourists that he knows will soon be passing by on their way to see the church. He designs beautiful Amharic alphabets onto goat skins to augment his salary as a priest. He highlights his paintings with unusual designs that reflect the colors of the sun. From an awesome height, the people dwindle into mere specks below. Arabesque windows face towards the east, in the direction of the rising sun. This is the only part of the church that is ever, in any way, exposed to light. The other half of the building, that faces west, remains perpetually within the shadows. In a corner of the church, a priest waits patiently to perform the baptism rites. As we descend into the valley, a narrow passageway, like a chasm between two cliffs, opens out before us, and we feel our way carefully into the church.
we emerge into the courtyard and find ourselves staring into the eyes of the priest that we saw from above. Charting its course from the mountains, crystal clear water trickles across the cave stones of the church into a partitioned room where we're told baptisms take place. In one of the mountain graves, some well-preserved human skeletons can be seen jutting out at odd angles. Despite the years, some of the skin remains intact, and this is believed to be as a result of the mountain water, which oftentimes saturates the grave, and which is believed to contain natural preservatives, which help to keep the body partly mummified. For the Africans in diaspora, Pilgrimage to this ancient land can be a moving experience indeed, as it reunites them with their origins and the cultural traditions from which they were severed during the slave trade era. All the dead way. Oh, I always hear about this place, and I said I want to touch it, and today I prove it. Oh God, Lord, you is real. You live. Because you live, I live. It shows, yes, the majesty of our ancestors, because uh, brilliant, uh, spirited, wonderful people had to do this. It was not done by slaves. It was done by people with brilliant minds who knew what um, the end result would be, that it would be here for us to see. And so it touches my heart every time I come because I, it's just so special to know that my relatives did this, mm. that, that it's real. And what do you think about the sense of belonging that it brings alive in you, you know, to know that um, Ethiopia, you know, um, plays a very important part in, you know, in your roots? In all of our lives, yeah. yes, yes. I am black and I appreciate what has been done through the years to hold on to our culture and I am concerned that young people are not understanding of what a powerful people we are and I encourage them to come because they will then understand why the Italians go home to Italy, why the Polish people go home to Poland, if I can just get them home to Africa. I just, it's my, it's my goal in life to bring as many people as I can to the continent before I leave here. It's been a real pleasure, a privilege speaking with you both. Thank you so very much. Thank you for asking me that question. <laughs> I'd like to tell the story. <laughs>
looking at the churches in Lalibela nearly speechless. I mean, there's, it's difficult to know what to say because there really is nothing else like it. And I mean, the one other um, place that I can think of in the world that's like that would be the, the pyramids. But here you almost seem like you're getting something special because there's not so many people coming to visit them. Everyone sees the pyramids at Giza, but so few people see these churches and so you feel special. This life of strict adherence has become second nature to the people of Lalibela, and their children too will learn this way of life. From the depths of the church, the priest makes his unhurried ascent, shielded by an umbrella made of velvet. Ceremoniously, he reads from the holy book. The offering is collected in an umbrella held upside down, into which the coins are tossed. And from the Beta Georgis Church, which was the last of the rock-hewn churches built by King Lalibela. I'm Yvonne Bassi, and from Ethiopia we're saying it's been a real pleasure having you here with us. See you next week.